I'm Sabrina Reno. Uh, I work at the French Livestock Institute, Institut de l'Élevage in France, in Lyon. And I'm in charge of applied research project uh, about milk and uh, farmhouse cheese uh, quality. Uh, the purpose uh, of my talk will be to give you uh, information about the HP estate management at the farm level and what we learn in France about, about it, uh, even if uh, you are certainly aware that, and Dali Valérie said that uh, there is a lot that we don't know yet. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry because uh, I don't use the same vocabulary as Valérie, so I will, t I will talk about STEC instead of VTEC and HP STEC uh, instead of MP STEC, but it refers to the French definition of uh, what is a highly pathogen uh, uh, STEC. Uh, so first, uh, I will remind you some general uh, background knowledge about uh, STEC uh, at the farm level and after we'll talk about uh, how to, to deal with it uh, from a curative and a preventive point of view. Uh, as you know, uh, ruminants can be healthy carriers uh, of STEC in their gut. Um, the, the bacteria can remain a long time in the gut. Uh, it was observed uh, during one year, for example, in a, in a study. And uh, they excrete uh, the bacteria in their faces in a very intermittent way. Um, and some uh, super, uh, super shedding excretion was also uh, observed uh, in uh, some studies. Um, the co for cows uh, and um, and sheep and um, only for O157, not over several types, and the co sheds uh, um, uh, 10,000 uh, bacteria per gram of feces. But it seems that this uh, super sh shedding is also uh, intermittent. And we must uh, remember also that uh, they can survive a very long time in the environment, uh, on the ground, uh, in the slurry, or on the walls, and everywhere in the environment. And as uh, Valérie told you, um, we must be very careful when we compare studies uh, talking about uh, prevalence of uh, bacteria because it's not the same if, if you speak about uh, uh, gene, STS, STX genes or isolated strain. As you can say, I put an example of two studies. Uh, in 2002-2003, in in we did a research um, and we found that if you consider only uh, STX gene, 92% uh, of the herd can have uh, one animal that carry uh, the gene in their faces. And if you look only to the HP stake uh, isolated in the faces at the slaughterhouse, they found 1.8% uh, of uh, dairy co uh, having this uh, highly pathogenic serotype. So it's not the same, and you have to be very careful about it. Um, I would like to uh, highlight the, the necessity of managing the problem uh, at the farm level because similar, t similar strains have, be have been found in animal and milk or dairy products and in ill people, so the, the origin uh, can come from the farm. And we know, and it was shown in different studies, that uh, the dairy product contamination is very rare during manufactur manufacturing because uh, STEC uh, doesn't have special ability to form biofilm or to resist to cleaning and disinfection products. Um, the strong hypothesis about uh, the milk contamination origin is a fecal one. Uh, the bacteria is in the feces, uh, on the bedding, and it goes on the teeth skin, and, and during milk, milking it goes in the milk. 
Um, the milk can also be contaminated by the water that is used for cleaning the, the milking machine. And perhaps we can imagine that uh, the milking machine can become a secondary reservoir if it is uh, badly designed or badly maintained or poorly cleaned. Uh, but in the case we encountered in France, uh, we rarely faced this type of contamination. And we also ask ourselves about intramammary excretion because some scientists and some uh, scientific publication told, uh, talked about uh, this uh, hypothesis. But it seems to us that it's very raw because uh, we cannot find the stage gene uh, in um, strains of E. coli mastitis that were in collection in France. So uh, let's talk about the milk contamination scheme. Um, I talk about the fecal contamination, but to be more precise, uh, so the ruminants uh, carry and excrete the bacteria. It circulates uh, on the farm through bedding, uh, feed and water flow. Uh, other species can be involved too, um, birds and rodents, water, and finally go in the milk uh, during the, the milking process. Um, so let's move to what we can do uh, at the farm level. I would like to stress that uh, there is two completely different approaches to management uh, if we are talking uh, on preventive or curative uh, uh, situation. It's not uh, the same, you will not do the same thing. Uh, when you are on a preventive uh, point of view, uh, you, you're targeting fecal contamination, so uh, we can imagine that uh, the prevention measures that are already implemented for other pathogens are efficient for HP ASTEC. Uh, for example, uh, to have a um, clean animal and especially clean teeth, uh, to avoid cross contamination between effluent and animals or their feeds. Uh, to have a good uh, milking machine design, maintenance and cleaning, to have good animal health and nutrition and young animal uh, management. Uh, but uh, we have to be very careful because the farm must not become an hospital and too much hygiene is not good. And we, for example, we saw some farms uh, that have a stake in their milk and they are very clean. So we ask ourselves if uh, uh, too much hygiene uh, didn't uh, leave too much place for the pathogen bacteria to develop. And we want positive microflora uh, to, for the cheese making. And, um, and furthermore, we think that the positive microflora uh, uh, can play an important role uh, by uh, stopping the development of, uh, of a pathogen. Uh, in terms of uh, prevention, um, about, uh, I, would, I would like to say some words about milk monitoring. Uh, Valérie told us that uh, milk analysis method needs to be improved, and we saw it uh, every day uh, in talking with the dairies uh, in France. Uh, so implementing a milk selection method uh, or, or building surveillance plan is very difficult and we don't have enough uh, quantitative data and scientific knowledge uh, for listeria of, or salmonella, for example. Uh, the dairies are used to analyze the milk they collect and to sort it and uh, we have the scientific knowledge, but not for STEC. And uh, an interesting uh, in indicator can be E. coli enumeration in the milk. Uh, you must know that there is no direct link with STEC presence. You can have high level of E. coli in the milk and no STEC, and the contrary, uh, because it's not the same analysis. 
and, but it remains an interesting fecal contamination indicator. So a lot of dairies are using this indicator uh, to analyze the milk. And in case of milk uh, contamination, so from a curative point of view, uh, the first thing is to be prepared because uh, when you do analyze, you search and you find <laughs> You find a steak and uh, what uh, what can I do? Um, uh, when you when you we work in the on the method uh, to to stop the contamination, we work first uh, on stopping the contamination of the milk at milking uh, step. Uh, the teeth cleanliness, the milking, the milking machine, machine cleaning and the water quality and so on. It's the first step to consider. And after uh, we implement a lot of measure uh, to restrict the bacteria circulation on the farm, uh, trying to, to cut this uh, circulation. And we hope that this will uh, diminish the carriage and the um, excretion by the, the animals because at the moment we don't know well uh, how to stop the, the excretion by the animals. There's a big field of research uh, on this. Uh, we wrote uh, about uh, this management of uh, STEC uh, in general and at the farm level in um, a booklet uh, edit edited uh, by the French Dairy Association. I have only one example, but if you can read fl French, I put the email address where you can ask for the, the book. Oh. And <laughs> I wanted to talk about a study we uh, we begin uh, last year. It, we are doing a case study with uh, dairies that uh, encounter uh, cases where milk is uh, contaminated uh, by the HP stack uh, strains. The objective of the project is to improve our general uh, knowledge on HP estate ecology on the reform and especially for farm small ruminants and especially for goats because uh, there were in the past studies about cows and ewes <laughs> I'm not sure of the pronunciation but not for goats so we, we work more with goats this year and we would like to test control measures in the, the farm whose milk is contaminated and to with a final goal to, to improve uh, the management of uh, the case that occurs. Uh, so we will uh, study, um, we use the, the, the monitoring plan that some dairies have uh, implement, implemented and we, we will um, study about 15 or 20 farms uh, with more focus on goats and these farms have a persistent milk contamination, even if it's very intermittent, as the faces excretion. Uh, and we will have, uh, we have uh, one year monitoring of the milk and the environment in this farm. And uh, the farmer and the dairies, they implement a control measure. Uh, classic uh, fecal contamination control measure or over more innovative as uh, probiotics. We use, uh, we give probiotics to the animal with cell uh, walls and uh, clay and we, we, we try and we see what it, uh, what it, it do. Um, it was tested uh, for uh, the probiotics were tested in Canada and United States, but in uh, field lots premises and for O157 uh, only. And we have more problem with O26 uh, uh, and O103. 
And we also work with the scientists and the, and the dairies on the method to solve the problem. Uh, uh, for example, what samples do you take in the environment to have a quick uh, re res to quickly resolve the, the problem? And uh, at last, we will also uh, do a screening for STX and e intimine uh, genes in uh, over E. coli mastitis strain uh, collection uh, about uh, for ewes and goats. Um, that's all about this project. I forgot to say that it is support, supported uh, by the French Ministry of Agriculture and the French Dairy uh, Associations. And we work with a lot of uh, scientists and dairies. Uh, to conclude, uh, I list a uh, question to address because uh, there is a lot that we don't know. Uh, we have to gain a better knowledge of what is a dangerous strain, uh, the definition. We have to optimize the laboratory, laboratory analysis method uh, to learn more about the management of fecal contamination and the effect of good practice on farms and during milking. Uh, a lot is done in the scientific publication on carry, carrier and excretion limitation. I, I talk about probiotics, but uh, vaccine was also tested with success for O1, uh, O157. Uh, again, on feedlots, so we don't know uh, if uh, it will work in small dairy farm. Uh, there is also uh, there is surely work to do on the bedding management too. Uh, and uh, the, the huge uh, thing will be to, to work about the role and the use of on-farm uh, microbial ecosystem and gut uh, microflora to, to control stack uh, on the farm and in the animals. I put some reference. Uh, we wrote an, an article um, uh, with um, the International Dairy Association in uh, 2013 and the, the guide uh, I talk about. So thank you for your attention and feel free to ask any question you may have and we will answer with the help of Eric for the English part. <laughs>